Leather is a very durable material. It's key to most every large professional sport around the world, including football. While we often call it a pigskin, footballs at the professional level are primarily made from cow hides. The leather from NFL footballs comes from the Horween Leather Company based in Chicago, Illinois, USA. They were founded in 1905 and in the 1940s began making the leather for NFL footballs. The founders' two sons, Arnold and Ralph, Ralph pictured here, even played professional football themselves. The special football leather is a top grade cowhide treated with Horween's unique blend of extracts and tanning processes. That provides for its quality and performance elements, making it unique from any other type of leather. The leather then goes to the Wilson Sporting Goods Football Manufacturing Plant. That's based in Ohio, and they've been making NFL footballs there since 1941. There are around 125 workers at the factory, and for years, only about two to three people stitched all of the balls. So if there was a ball in an NFL game at that time, it likely came through the hands of just those few people. It's incredible. So this ball is a K ball. And we could tell that because there's a K marking right here. That's different than most NFL footballs which don't have that marking at all. So what is a K ball? K balls are otherwise known as kicking balls and they are used only for kicking plays in a game. They are also hand delivered by Wilson to the game officials on the day of the game. So they never touch player hands until just a few hours before kickoff. To give a little more background, each week, Wilson sends new footballs to every team for their upcoming game. The team equipment managers usually prepare those balls through varying processes of roughing them up, softening the leather, and any number of physical alterations that fit the quarterback's preferences, all while keeping it within NFL standards. The K balls, six in total, are specially marked by Wilson and then hand delivered under security from Wilson to the game crew on game day. The game officials will then give three kicking balls to each team two hours and 30 minutes before kickoff. That allows the kickers and the team staff enough time to do some alterations, but not nearly as what was extensively done before. So taken overall, what looks like a usual football, which it is, has a lot of things going on to it. We have the proprietary markings from Wilson in the leather. We have it marked as a K ball from the pre or postseason week two. It's the number one K ball, so likely used in that game. We have the indicator that there's a chip inside. We have the P on the corner of this panel and then the small X on top of the laces. So there's an incredible story that goes into this ball, where it's come from and what it's done on game day. So now let's take a look inside. And for that, we're gonna use a couple different tools. Here is a small knife. We have our seam ripper. And then we've got two things here. One, just a piece of football leather going to be a little different than our NFL leather, which is going to be higher quality, I believe. But we'll check this out and see how this compares to the leather that comes from the ball itself. And we also have a swatch ring. This is going to tell us how thick the leather is. So the first thing we'll do is we will take these laces apart. This is all hand stitched. Success. We got that. So this is cool. Here's how it looks without the laces in it. So we've got these stitches that go on the outside. And then here is another set of stitching right in here. So when we open this up, we can see a couple things going on inside. We've got the bladder and the ball, and then this piece on top, which is a protector from the seams to keep the bladder protected. All right, so the bladder is out. So here's the football. We could start to see that there's a lining in there. It's almost like a fabric lining. It even looks like some of the panels are numbered individually. And we have obviously reinforcing for this stitching. So let's continue taking out the panels and then we could look at it um, opened up. So I'm gonna try our knife again since that really worked well last time. We'll kind of come in here. All right, I'm gonna be very gentle with this. There we go. And here are the four panels of a football. So I think this is actually the stitching that joins this white backing fabric to the leather itself. We have kind of these stitch areas. So I'm gonna pop this open. This is awesome. 
So we can see there's actually no glue. We just have heavy stitching from this material. It almost seems like a very dense, thick, heavy canvas, maybe. And we have our leather underneath. And that's amazing to see. So we've got the inner material here. We have the outside layer, obviously, that we're familiar with. And the inside is the unfinished. This is the raw side. They're also referred to as the flesh side of leather. Obviously, the leather is going to start as a flat piece. So to be able to take on this form and structure and then maintain it, there's probably some step in the manufacturing process that's going to press on this panel with heat, uh, maybe moisture, and then let it dry. And then it'll take this form you know, more naturally after that technique is applied. So first off, let's compare it to our purchasable sample. So here's our purchasable one. We have kind of a bumpy texture on it. We have the flesh side below it. So we could see our two edges here. Here is our football on top. And here is our other one below. And the football is pretty thick. We've got that. Here's our other one. So we'll be able to take our sample ring here and then tell you around what thickness this leather is or what weight. So it looks like we're around a four to five ounce as a match. And if we look at our sample here, that we got that we can buy online, probably about a five to six. So it's gonna be a little bit heavier than what we're seeing in the actual leather used in the footballs. So it looks like we've got a multi-layered bladder. I'm not sure of the exact materials. It feels plasticky, but that could certainly relate to a lot of things. And if we look here, I could almost pinch and move the two layers. We'll take our hobby knife, and then we'll just kind of come in here Open that up a little bit. All right, so let's open this up halfway and then we'll explore the inside. On the inside, there's another layer of that clear material. So it looks like it's a three layer approach. And these are probably puncture resistant. So here's the air filler part. And if we look here, it's kind of got a bead around that. So I grabbed a needle, a typical air filling needle that would put it in. So we could see from the inside, what's going on. So it essentially put the air needle in and then here's how it looks on the inside. And that's where the air will go in to fill the ball and the bladder. And then when they're done filling it, comes out, that hole will close up and the ball will have air in it. And then, all right, let's check out the sensor. So let's explore it slowly and kind of see what's going on. So on the outside, it looks like a, just a basic cover here. So what we'll do is we'll essentially take apart this plastic cover and the sensor should just pop out and we can take a look at that. Let's try to pull it up. Aha, and it pops right off. So let's kind of gently, it's coming apart. Aha, it also has the um, FCC ID and other information there under it. So it looks like this whole unit probably comes as a pre-configured unit with that ID, this chip and the cover, and that probably then goes in the manufacturing process and then is attached via this seal over here. This is a metal piece. Yeah, it's possible that functions as some sort of an antenna. That's the chip inside of an NFL football. So here we have all the pieces in the football. We have the sensor itself. We have the bladder and those elements. And most importantly, we have our leather. If you know what the PS stands for on here, please share, as well as if you know about what any of the other markings mean, uh, such as the marking down here or the P on the corner here. I'm so curious what those are. So we talked earlier about using this to create items, so giving it a second life. These could be so many things. We've talked about a couple from watch straps to wallets part of a notebook cover, parts of jewelry, or inlaid into rings. Share your imagination too. You could likely think of things far beyond we have, and we really want to hear what you've got in mind, because this could make some really special leather goods. And with that, we could also honor the heritage of football and all that goes into making the leather itself, and then the footballs that get used on game day. So there's a lot that goes into making footballs. It's been really fun checking this out. A lot of exploring and surprises along the way. So if you enjoyed this, please share. If you have questions, let us know. So that is what is inside an NFL football. 
And there you have it. Until next time.